Good morning everybody. I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying the fruit juices and the croissants. Um, sorry I can't be with you today. Uh, but I was asked to share with you uh, some of my thoughts on customer centricity and target operating models. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Ah, in terms of target operating models, a golden thread that has to run through any model is the connection with a successful customer outcome. Often a challenge with traditional approaches has been the emphasis on building the target operating model, the actual mechanics of the project, if you like. Of course, if that effort is aligned to the SEO, that's fantastic, but that doesn't happen by chance. We need to understand how customer centricity influences and advises the development of the target operating model. So let's step through some of the differences. One of the mantras of customer centricity, of course, is to work backwards to start with the customer need and align everything to delivering that. So where do traditional TOMs start? Usually with a strategy. And of course, if that isn't outside in, you're already on a sticky wicket from the get-go. If that is part of the challenge, then you need to get the top team to get outside in before venturing down the TOM road. But I'll come back to that one later on. Now let's assume the strategy is outside in and we can begin the definition of the operating model. Uh, now, in this place, when you, you're starting out to define the target operating model, uh, a common misunderstanding is to start with the where are we now, the as is if you like. However, progressive outside in organisations really start at the beginning of the story, the customer need and what we need to do to ensure we deliver it. So let's assume then that the strategy has identified the customer categories then our task is to objectively understand the needs of the customers in those categories. Now that's not like segmentation. Uh, we're not segmenting by circumstancing, we're categorising by need. So that's worth remembering as well. So we use a particular tool to actually help us really clearly define uh, what the customer needs are. And we call that the successful customer outcome matrix. Uh, the guys at, uh, at your end of things there will be able to help you through with that. And it clearly articulates the needs, sometimes even when the customer doesn't know them themselves. So who knew they wanted an Apple iPhone 3 before Apple invented them? We didn't. So no amount of trying to understand what the customer said they wanted would have clearly given us the needs. So the SCOM clearly identifies the needs in a way that we've got an objective set of measurable statements. Uh, which allow us to know whether our processes and our systems and our people and our organisation is actually geared to be able to deliver successful customer outcomes in all its various forms. So once we've understood what the real needs are, we can then get on with it. Amazon referred to that old SCOM exercise as working backwards and Jeff Bezos has actually written a book about that. Now we're ready to start with the as is. And of course the temptation is to be very heavy handed here and spend actually too much time defining processes, defining the current state, people, technology and other stakeholders. And literally years can be wasted by which time the playing field has shifted dramatically. Ask yourself, how much do I need to know to know I know, I know, I know enough, and then stop the analysis. No need to go any further. And whatever you do, don't follow somebody else's previous prescription. You need to do this for yourselves. Right? Um, people with prescriptions will be people like IS vendors, people who have an interest in actually you buying their systems at the end of this. So don't get force fit with your round peg into a square hole by those square hole vendors. That's one of the big dangers that sometimes people fall into. So in terms of structured approaches, um, again, be wary of people who claim to offer best practice. Because If it's best practice, I would like to know whose it is, because I'd really like to go there and actually look at that. How can it be best practice? Uh, what you need to be thinking about in the context of your own Tom is what do we need to be doing for the future? In other words, next practice. So when undertaking the analysis phase, you need to make a call as to when you know enough. Pause, evaluate and then move on. One way of keeping focus is to actually refer back to the customer needs and use that as a beacon to guide your effort. Now just before we finish with the as is, let's tackle that thorny subject of value chains. Value chains. We all know value chains, don't we? Ask yourself the question, what is missing from Porter's value chain model? I'll give you five seconds for that one. 
what's missing? Yep, the customer. We need to tread with care and perhaps revisit the concept of the value chain and actually map the complete customer experience. That is a big ask, but it is the next practice of the outside in organisations such as Zara, Zappos, Google, Amazon, those sort of guys. In fact, if we had Michael Porter in the room, I'd, 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 I'd wager you that he would say, where is the customer in your value chain model? This is 21st century after all. So I don't think we're alone in that sort of uh, shift in thinking, if you like, in terms of instead of that internal focus is the shift to understanding the complete customer experience. Um, if you want more on that for reference, that's in the book Outside In, uh, which again, we can make available for you if you if you like. Now, assuming you're still with me and you haven't spilt the orange juice, we should now consider the to be shape of things to come. And if you've done the legwork with a customer needs definition and alignment, this has become an activity of what to stop and how quickly, what to improve, what to introduce and how quickly we can implement. Using the CEM method gives us a clear focus and a quick to action plan. I'm confident my colleagues at your end of things will share much more detail, especially with regard to successfully aligning your target operating models outside in. So please do enjoy the rest of your breakfast and I look forward to meeting many of you soon. Thanks very much.